There are a lot of spiders on this planet, somewhere in the quadrillions, which is good for us because spiders eat a lot of insects, like a lot. It is estimated that they eat 400 to 800 million metric tons of insects every year. To compare, humans eat about 400 million metric tons of meat and fish every year. They eat insects that aren't our friends. Pests in the home like ants, roaches, and mosquitoes. Outside the home, they also eat insects that could otherwise destroy our crops. They eat so we can eat too. According to Norman Platnick, who is a leading arachnid scientist at the American Museum of Natural History, if spiders disappeared, we would face famine. Also, if you watched the previous video about deadly spiders, you would have seen that while a few spiders have a potential risk, no species is really deadly in the true sense of the word. So if spiders are so great, why are so many people terrified of them? Well, like with anything, there are multiple factors that can contribute to the fear of spiders. One theory is spider trauma. This is the idea that a scary spider related event happened in early childhood. To condition a person to be scared of spiders, often the person might forget the experience, but the fear continues. Maybe a spider crawled on your face. Maybe a spider robbed you at gunpoint, who knows? According to some research, children who are very fearful of spiders reported having more scary experiences than children who weren't as afraid of spiders. There is some evidence that might suggest the fear is genetic. A study done at City University London found that participants with a fear of spiders had a family member who was also afraid of spiders. The counterpoint to this though is that it might not be genetic, you simply learn to be afraid of spiders because growing up other members of your family are afraid of them. But then where does the fear originally stem from? Well, it could be evolutionary. Researchers from the Max Planck Institute in Germany and from Uppsala, Uppsala University in Sweden did research to see if the fear is something people are born with. So they did a study with a big bunch of babies. The babies were shown a variety of images while the researchers analyzed their response. It turns out that the baby's pupils got larger when they saw images of snakes and spiders, but there was no change when they were shown images of flowers and fish as a control. This might suggest the fear is innate. To quote the study itself, these results speak to the existence of an evolved mechanism that prepares humans to acquire specific fears of ancestral threats. But spiders aren't really a threat. I suppose some spiders that are potentially dangerous are rarely deadly, but they can give you bites that are very painful and cause negative side effects like nausea, headaches, dizziness, etc. So it could have made life a lot more difficult, hard to hunt and gather if you're in intense agony. There's also the idea of spiders being a byproduct of actual danger. For example, while it's good to have some spiders in your home to deal with pests, having a big bunch of spiders hanging out and doing well, living their best lives, also means there must be a big bunch of food for them to feed on, which could include a lot of pests. Imagine this, a large amount of spiders have gathered in an area where there are a large number of mosquitoes for them to feed on. And the mosquitoes, not the spiders, could be spreading disease. Perhaps our ancestors made a connection between the spiders and the disease, even though spiders weren't responsible. Maybe staying away from an area that had a lot of spiders meant staying away from an area that also had a lot of mosquitoes or some other annoying dangerous insect. Spiders often get blamed for things they haven't done. And the media doesn't really help. In movies, books, and games, spiders are usually portrayed as scary, dangerous creatures. There's the fantastic movie Arachnophobia that makes spiders seem pretty sinister. They even train the spiders to move and run towards people. And wait, how do you train a spider? I don't know, maybe check out a video I made on Patreon. Even newspapers and popular news media vilify spiders. A research article done in August of 2020 titled Media framing of spiders may exacerbate arachnophobic sentiments. They examined the news published online in Italian newspapers between 2010 and 2020. They looked at news about the Mediterranean Black Widow and the Mediterranean Recluse. They found the news quality generally poor. 70% contained different types of errors, 
32% were sensationalistic and in virtually none was an expert consulted. They found reports were unnecessarily alarmist. There were three reports of casualties from the recluse, two of which were straight up fake news and the third was unverified. Not only that, but all this bad and sensationalist reporting was spread on social media. Overstated news referring to spider bites was shared significantly more on social media, thus contributing to frame a distorted perception of the risk. It's not just in Europe where perceptions are skewed. In the United States, misidentifying injuries as spider bites is very common. For example, in South Carolina, 940 physicians responded to a survey and they reported that 478 people claimed to have been bitten by the brown recluse spider. But only one brown recluse spider bite was definitely confirmed. According to another study, out of 182 Southern California patients seeking treatment for spider bites, only 3.8% had actual spider bites. The majority, over 85%, had infections. Spiders often take the blame. Someone wakes up with a bite, well, it was either a mosquito or a spider. But why a spider? Spiders don't drink human blood, so while a bite could occur, it would be more of a rare accident than a common occurrence. There are many other creatures that would enjoy biting you a lot more, like mosquitoes, bedbugs, fleas, horseflies, etc, etc. According to onhealth.com, if you think you were bitten by a spider, you probably weren't. But I want to shift gears a bit, because if you are someone who is afraid of spiders, I'm going to guess you've heard something along the lines of, oh, it's just a spider, it can't hurt you. And to many who are afraid of spiders, that's not really the point. The study done at the City University of London found that the legginess, yes, they actually said that, and erratic movements of spiders are some of the main characteristics that disturb people. Now, I'm not sure why the legginess and movement specifically freak people out, but I feel like it's probably a combination of the previous reasons. An evolutionary hangover, childhood experience, and the media's portrayal of spiders. I'm guessing that a combination of these, or even all of these combined, is where the fear comes from. I have been focusing on Europe and North America, but according to Psychology Today, spider fear is significantly less common in places like India, Africa, the Caribbean, and amongst the Aboriginal cultures of Australia, where they have funnel webs and redbacks. So what is the solution? Well, just to clarify, I often use arachnophobia and a fear of spiders interchangeably, which isn't accurate. Arachnophobia causes clinically significant distress that can impact an individual's quality of life. So if your fear causes you so much stress, it's reducing your quality of life, you might wanna seek some treatments. And there are a variety to choose from. A random fact is that some studies have shown that simply watching Spider-Man can help people see spiders in a less negative light. If you're someone who's interested in keeping spiders out of your home, there are a few things you can do. Spiders like dark places with plenty of chances to hide. So keeping your place as clean as possible with plenty of open spaces and daylight should make your place unattractive to a spider. You should also try and seal any small holes to stop spiders getting in. Another thing that apparently works is using strong scents. I've read that spiders don't like mint, so maybe having some mint plants or using peppermint essential oils can deter spiders. The nice thing about this is that it doesn't hurt the spiders and the scent might also keep away things like mosquitoes, so that's good. Just keep in mind though, as creepy as they might seem, they are just helpful little fellas, not looking for any trouble. Thanks for watching.